Sky One has exclusive access to Hugh Laurie and the rest of the cast and crew of your favorite medical mystery show. I'm not really a doctor. That's outrageous. Hugh Laurie is a pain in the ass. This is where the drugs are. Sperm everywhere. What are you going to do with that? Oh, I don't know. Oh! Hey, you can't see this stuff. That's next year. This guy's better, right? <laughs> Welcome to House, an insider's guide. Good luck cutting that together. It's one of the most popular shows in the world, seen by almost 82 million people in 66 countries. In its five seasons, it's won dozens of awards, including Golden Globes, Screen Actors Guild Awards and Emmys. In case you've been living under a rock for the last five years, welcome to one of television's most exciting shows, House. The world of diagnostic medicine at Princeton Plainsborough Hospital revolves around our favorite patient-hating Vicodin-addicted doctor, Gregory House. These sluts are celebrities. My bad. Ouchie. Keeping House in line and providing a bit of romantic banter is hospital administrator Dr. Lisa Cuddy. Drop your pants. House is helped out by his team of doctors, Dr. Eric Foreman. It's more than stuck. Val's been dead for six hours. Dr. Remy Hadley, also known as 13. Time for the B12 cocktail in my life lesson. And Dr. Chris Tobe. It's a shame that she might die because House has some personal crack to work through. Former team members, the newly married Dr. Alison Cameron and Dr. Robert Chase, help out from time to time. Office romances are a bad idea. And House's best friend, Dr. James Wilson, is always there to provide a bit of support. And since you're 150 years old, air travel was impossible. Exclusive from the set of season six, the cast and crew will give House fans the inside scoop on what makes these characters tick and what we can expect from season six. Action! She's got rhabdo. I know it's rhabdo, Foreman knows it's rhabdo, deep in his heart, even Chase knows it's rhabdo. Isn't it annoying when everybody in the room knows something you don't? I mean, you've never seen a character like House before, I think. House is incredibly dynamic and, and a really intriguing character. Sorry, a patient's got a rectal bleed. I'm busy. We need you to do Actually, as you can see, I'm not busy. It's just a euphemism for get the hell out of here. He, I, I've always felt like he's on the side of the angels without actually being one. I'm sorry, but I'm about to lose you because I'm about to drive into a tunnel in a canyon on an airplane while hanging up the phone. Everything he does, there's this kind of crass side to it, but usually it's just because it's kind of brutally honest, not because it's just blatantly mean. Your son was fine when he got here. It was your freaked out over protectiveness that nearly killed him. The comments are, can be pretty out of uh, order. Yes, ladies, I am blaming her, period. He's the anti-hero's hero. As brash as House may seem to be at certain times, I think at the end of the day, People respect that he's just telling you like it is, so you have all of the information. He doesn't candy coat it. That's not a pot belly. That's a tumor. As a physician, I always say, no, no, no. Doctors could never really be that way. No one acts that way who's a doctor. That's just television. You know, if you're in the mood to start kissing or groping. Or... But then if you talk to nurses, they'll say, you know, that Dr. House, he's just about right. You'll have to excuse Dr. House. He mistakes immaturity for edginess. House is an addict in many ways. He's addicted not just to the painkillers and the problem solving. He's addicted to all kinds of patterns of behavior. I'm already taking responsibility for one doctor with a drug habit. There is a definite tendency in him to sort of revert to his uh, mean and lonely self. It's part, of, it's part of his battle. He's not someone who is, you know, one day going to see the light and uh, convert to some uh, creed or religion that's going to change everything the way he thinks and behaves. He, it's, that's just not in him. Deep down, he's a softie, you know. I mean, deep down. I don't know that, the, to be honest, I don't know this character has a heart of gold. Um, that would be, I think, too easy. His job is to heal people, you know. So ultimately, as odd as the methods are, the motives are usually pretty pure. I think. I give you a diagnosis. You don't like it, there are exits on every floor. He's a rebel. A rebels, you know, people are a rebels, aren't they? Do an MRI, T2 images. No. Young people 
I do think respond to the fact that he, that he doesn't wear a white coat and he, that he is essentially rebellious. He doesn't take authority well. So he seems to be a popular character with young people. I won the Teen Choice Award. How about that? I'm 50 years old. I won the Teen Choice. I've got a surfboard, which I do my ironing on. I'm not going to go surfing on it. What do you think? I'm not mad. I like to think that I've defined a generation. Yeah, yeah, that was what I set out to do. I think old people respond to the fact that he is impatient with a sort of sentimental PC world, that he's got no truck with that. Double threat. You go freaking deadbeat dad. House. Sorry, parentally challenged. The older audience, I count myself as one, um, find that refreshing. So I think it's sort of, there's both things. What excites us about it is the character stuff and the, the, the patient and House's outlook on life and House's outlook on the nature of right and wrong and the choices and, and the people around them and how, how they all relate to each other. You know, that character's take on medicine um, albeit different, which is wonderful, and Renegade, which is exciting, is, is what made it different. So the idea started with just what if you told a genre medical story, but as a mystery. Why does attempted murder from 25 years ago have suddenly become relevant to her health now? Maybe they gave her something toxic. This is fun, isn't it? And then David's brilliance uh, intersected with that idea and um, the creation of Dr. House at the center of it, a doctor who doesn't actually like to see patients is much more interested in the puzzle and he's handicapped himself so doesn't want to be seen by patients the whole idea of of taking a doctor and and trying to imagine what they really say when you leave the room yeah. and you know allowing the audience in on that uh felt exciting to us and um then you put hugh laurie into it and then it just becomes everything and more I don't know the secret of success uh, of this show. In fact, I don't even like to use the word success because I'm slightly superstitious and I, I feel that if, you, if I even think the word, someone will drop a piano on my head. Um, I'm just sort of ready for disaster at any moment. I love that I never know that this show is going to be the same show twice, that I never know what Hugh's going to do next. And that really is the center of it. The great writing and the great performances, I feel, are the key to what make people come back to this every week. You know, it's quite a dark show sometimes, but there's a lot of comedy in it. Okay, I admit it. I have bulimia. I look good, though, don't I? There is a sort of excitement in watching uh, clever people cross swords with each other. and Cutting around his endoscopic ultrasound, didn't find peep. So disproving it's her pancreas proves it's her brain. Yes! Some people want House to change. As soon as House changes, the show's over, we're done. You know, fortunately, it's good for our show, but sort of bad for humanity that there's so many different ways that the human body can fall apart. One of the fun things of our show is that we have no boundaries. It's not about those boundaries. We're a show that sort of starts on the edge and goes farther. Uh, you know, we're about the one in a million case. We're about the, 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 what happens when everything else has been tried and, and you have to do something new and different. House may work with his team, but that doesn't mean he has to like them. You're fired. You're Ish. fired. House is not good to his friends. If House needs something done, you know, he needs a surgery done or whatever, he'll come to me and I'll be like, well, no, I'm not going to do that because, you know, it's probably going to kill the patient. Complex tachycardia, she's going to crash. House has tried to fire me, like, about three times, I think. You don't still have the hearts for me, do you? Of course Cameron looks up to House. I mean, I think she'll always admire his ability to piece things together in an totally unorthodox and unusual way. Starting tomorrow, you'll come to my office for your fix. Cuddy is the only one that can handle House. In more ways than one. Cuddy and House have an incredibly complicated relationship. They're great friends. At some point, they had a one-night stand, and he disappeared. Every once in a while, he'll say something that's just... He's crossed a line. Go suck on the little bastard child who makes you feel good about yourself. She has a pretty high pain tolerance. She really does. Or she just has such bad taste in men that it's all foreplay. People who get close to you get hurt. I think she's a good match for him in a lot of ways, uh, although this is the show house, so nobody can really actually be happy. So it can't ever really work, but it can certainly be lots more torture. You're afraid to be happy. Why do you care if I'm happy? He needs me, I'm, I'd say, because I'm the only one he doesn't have power over or doesn't have power over him. The male companions, the sort of the Butch and Sundance thing is... Uh, actually, that's chancing my arm, isn't it? Comparing us to Butch and Sundance, I, I take that back. That's outrageous. What was I thinking? Um, yeah, odd couple, let's say. 
it's a way of examining a marriage without it being a marriage. I told you that I was sorry. Would it change anything? I wouldn't believe you. And they don't appear to like each other for much of the time, and they, and they irritate each other, and they bicker. Boy, you're really milking this bereavement thing, aren't you? They go to such lengths to conceal their affection for each other, uh, as men often do. You're being an idiot. I don't know whether he himself feels that he can continue to function without Wilson. He's a prop in all kinds of ways, a, a very abused prop. And for some extraordinary reason, Wilson is okay with that. He sort of seems to absorb abuse quite well. Why do I have to be the one who gives health sage advice? You know, to be honest, I'm sick of helping, help, sick of helping house out. That's all I seem to do. Is I'm like his mom. It's exhausting. Come on, admit it, admit it. Coming up, gory details. Oh. Gossip. Don't get me started on the Australian. And season six secrets. I'm really excited about season six. I think we can tease a little more. Chuck me when I read it. Now we've told you everything. <laughs> Sky One is back on the set of House. Working on House can mean long days for the cast. Luckily, they have kept their sense of humor. It's a very awkward place to work. Hugh uh, Laurie is, well, he's English, so he's a pain in the ass. That's just a given. I'm not really a doctor. Oh, Jesse, don't get me started on the Australian. Robert Sean Leonard is a nightmare. I need powder. He gets wheeled in. He doesn't need a chair, but he gets wheeled in. That's, he has an assistant that does that and takes him around the set, doesn't want to walk. I was given a ride today in a golf cart from my trailer to the set, which was, I'd say, a good hefty 30 yards. And I believe that's what she's referring to. And as I'm saying this now, I'm realizing that it's really not a defense at all. I'm just describing it. So oddly, so she's right. I'm a little prima donna, yeah. I like to get ridden places. I'll talk about Lisa if you want. The woman couldn't act tired if she stayed up for three nights in a row. Lisa is a very serious, serious actress. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Probably even more than Hugh, Lisa Edelstein is probably the hardest, most dedicated actress working in TV today. Sometimes we do certain things to prepare for scenes. Uh, for example, I had a scene with House um, where maybe I had to be a little, a little angry. And there's no reason why you can't express your anger in a variety of ways. We don't judge. We don't judge here in House, and I hope you don't judge at home. So let me take a tour of my office. This is a section that when Cuddy is not working, perhaps she's She's laying down and, and enjoy. Excuse me. And enjoying an afternoon of relaxation. Every year on house, these hallways have gotten wider. And now they're, as you can see, wider. No reflection on my dress size. I'm pretty sure it's more for camera work. At least that's what they tell me. Now you're in emergency. There's lots of beautiful blood samples and rubber gloves <laughs> and just so many fun things to play with. Dead and dying and suffering. This is where the drugs are. Don't take drugs. That's House's office. Go on, take a look. They give him a lot of props. I don't have as many props in my office, certainly not on my desk, and certainly not as morbid. Um, but that's okay. I'm not jealous. The amazing props are part of what makes the world of House seem so real. I'm gonna show you all the props and the bloods and guts. This is exclusive for all you British viewers, come on. Right now we've entered into one of the patient rooms. This is a dual bed patient set up here. I'm in charge of like the IV pole here, and the IV and putting all the things on the patient once it gets in here. Everything here on house is real. This monitor is real. Oh, look, pathology, also known as the lab. And uh, most of the equipment in here is real. The equipment that we have is the real deal. In fact, there's stories of doctors making house calls uh, here for one reason or another, asking if we had a particular piece of equipment, and we did, and they used it. This is property storage. This is where we hold items from past episodes. Up there is house's canes. 
Actually, all of his Hero 10 canes that he's used throughout the seasons are on display at a museum. This is what we call the gold room. There's no gold in it, but the stuff inside is valuable. That's why we call it that. Quick, we need a 20cc retractable syringe. You can't come in here with a pile of stuff. Wait, let's see. Whoa. Oh, look, here we go. 20cc retractable syringe. Uh, oh, nice. And they said, what are you gonna do with that? Oh, I don't know, let's see. Oh! It's not real, it's retractable, see? All oh, these cases have some gag in there, like this. But don't do it in your eye. Ah! It's just, it's just not real. This is so cool. Yeah, that's not freaky at all. Now we're going into the OR surgery. Over here we have a patient, and uh, I'm actually gonna do some surgery for you. Behind the scenes, it's like really behind the scenes. If you're a bit squeamish, you might not want to check this out. How you doing? You all right there? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh, oh, he answered. That's not good. All right, pay attention now. Uh, pop quiz for you. The Princeton Plainsboro Teaching Hospital takes place in what American state? Let's remember that question. You all right? You all right there? Oh. Oh, dear. Yeah. Look at that. Oh. Oh. Wow, look at that. What else we got in here? That's right, New Jersey. That's the answer. <laughs> I guess he was hit by a bus. <laughs> How are you feeling? Ugh. 10 pounds lighter. <laughs> hey, hey, you can't see this stuff. That's next year. Can't see all the secrets how the magic's done. Season 5's finale looked like it was going to be all about House and Cuddy, but fans actually saw Cameron and Chase's wedding and the shocking reveal that House's detox and his fling with Cuddy was all in his head. I think it was a really cool juxtaposition of having the wedding going on versus House realizing he needs help. And it takes the edge off how dark and intense it is that he's checking himself into a mental institution. I have my husband's sperm. So Cameron has the sperm of a dead husband, which is completely controversial. That's where sort of Chase really stepped up and his love for someone, you know, overcame such a crazy um, act. I never imagined that I would go to acting school to like <laughs> spend four months talking about sperm one day. Sperm everywhere. It's always a sad thing when sperm comes between people. It was the, um, the revelation that the whole thing has been a, a hallucination is held back to the last possible moment and uh, it, it is a shocking one. It shocked me when I read it. Um, I didn't see it coming, coming at all. Oh no, that... That's not what happened. Actually, the end of season five, to some extent, felt like where we've been heading since the beginning of the series. This is a guy on the edge, and he's stepped over the edge. I doubt whether the whole, se uh, the whole of season five was, was planned in that way, only because it would be superhuman if those writers were able to plan things that far in advance. It always sometimes feels to me, and I think they, they own up to this, that they're only about 20 minutes ahead of me, um, and I'm pretty far back. Cuddy has quite a journey in season five. She um, gets the baby, can't handle the baby. And then suddenly she's ripping her clothes off and making out with House, only it didn't actually happen. He had the realization with the Vicodin in his hand where we begin a very elaborate sequence of all these flashbacks that we constructed to be something that, you know, was similar to like Vanilla Sky or The Sixth Sense. One of these like, oh my God, that's what's been happening the whole time. So we had to revisit a great bit of distance. And that was exciting. The last six minutes of, of uh, the finale are some of my favorite work on the show. It's not intentional to lead your audience down a blind alley. Um, in that case of the finale for season five, you were sort of experiencing it as House experienced it. So um, as he started to unravel, you're suddenly becoming aware of what is real and what isn't real. The Asylum is a pretty gothic creation, and we actually had to go to New Jersey because they don't do gothic on the, on the west coast of America. It's all, um, it all looks like a petrol station, to be honest. And it is a pretty imposing edifice, made more so by the fact that it was a functioning um, psychiatric uh, uh, institution until only about six months before we went there. We sort of close the doors at the end of season five. He gets sucked into a place we've never seen before and season six opens up inside those doors. The experience of being incarcerated, because that's essentially what it is, does change him a bit. And a, but only a bit. And for how long will that remains to be seen? House? No. It's your other friend at the asylum. 
he's at some in somebody else's hands, uh, unlike the typical house where he's the puppet master and pulling other people's strings. I know you're busy ignoring me, but my mini bar is empty. The makeup of uh, his team had to have changed in his absence. So, how long do I have to be here? I think we can tease a little more on. F- I mean, Foreman winds up in charge of the team. You know, Foreman has to sort of step up to the plate. Obviously, that's going to put pressure on his relationship with 13 and where does Taub stand and all of that. At the same time, Foreman has to enlist the help of Cameron and Chase. The old team comes back, and uh, which is pretty exciting. He does not have his medical license when he first returns. Is he ever going to have a heart of gold? I don't think so. <laughs> He's someone who's going to be struggling uh, all his life with the... Um, with his, uh, with his dark side. We, we're not going to be a happily mar- married couple, you know, for more than, I don't know, six episodes. Or well, you know, that's house for you. You can't just have a happy ending. James Earl Jones plays uh, this African dictator who comes into the hospital. Um, and we treat him. And uh, there's a big ethical dilemma, you know, as to whether is he or isn't he, um, you know, committing genocide on, you know, on his own people. If this series ended with House and Cuddy running off into the sunset together, it would be the foulest ending you could possibly imagine. I can only picture the amount of hate mail we would get. <laughs> it just simply, it's just not the show. It wouldn't happen. You know, we will never run out of, of medical mysteries on this show. Now that it's going to its sixth season, there's no reason that this can't be the best season of the show. Surely there's, you know... Uh, some explosions and twists and turns to come. A whole bold new adventure. Now we've told you everything. (laughs) I'm saying I should not be here. I'm going with turning this ward upside down. That's your wrist, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Suicide taboo. Gosh, I've broken a rule on my first day. I will kill myself. So, will being banged up in an asylum soften the docks razor sharp tongue any? Brand new season six stars on Sky One HD next Sunday night at nine. It's followed at ten by a brand new series of Fringe. Get your Sky Plus on all of that right now. Next tonight, feel the burn of the belly flops as Justin Lee Collins turns high diver. <laughs>